Hello and welcome to Awake Ones. I'm Alexandra Wenman. I'm Lorraine Flaherty. I'm Sally Poinsett-Nash. And today we're very excited to introduce you to Crystal Wolstead, who is a medical aesthetician. Aesthetician. <laughs> I knew I was going to cop that one up. Um, but Crystal is a magical being and she also has amazing philosophies on beauty, inner and outer beauty, on life itself, on spirit on everything so we're delighted to have you on the show crystal thank you for joining us i'm so happy to be here and also can i just say crystal's like the reason that you know lorraine and myself definitely are looking fabulous these days sally's yet to experience the crystal <laughs> she's magic she's, she's next she's she's running 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 she doesn't behind. really need it <laughs> that, fabulous. that wasn't a comment on how you look, <laughs> no, you look beautiful <laughs> you look amazing i just think she doesn't really need it but yeah so crystal can you tell our viewers just a little bit about what it means to be a, a medical aesthetician sure. So basically, I am doing clinical treatments that are bas they're more medical grade than a fluffy, relaxing facial. So it's more skin rejuvenation, prevention, and then also if you have skin disorders and things that you can't control um, and you don't want to be taking medications, a lot of the treatments that I do will help with that as well. It's amazing. And you know, actually having a few sessions with Crystal, it's like you get the outer experience of you know, having the treatment. But you're also pretty good at sort of helping people to feel positive about themselves and bringing them up and, and helping them. It, I think that actually helps the overall process. Yes. I have kind of a little silly theory, and it's actually not silly that the longer that I've been practicing, the more I've been kind of getting in tune with this. But I feel that when someone comes in and they get the whole experience and kind of to have someone alongside that journey of going through this change in their skin or whatever it is, um, that they get better results. So a lot of my um, ideas stem from the mind is a huge aspect of what we will go through and the healing process and everything. So I plant the seed and basically guide them through it and tell them how beautiful they are and I see their beauty inside. And a lot of times they come into the clinic wanting something to quick fix something and then they'll hyper fix it on something else. And, um, I worked in LA for about a year and it just wasn't right for me because for me there's people who feed off of this insecurity and for me I love to empower women and make them feel beautiful and help them see what I see basically. So do people kind of come in and think oh if I fix this about myself my life will get better yes. kind of thing? It's, I think that's like a normal thing that any esthetician is going to say is that you're you're not getting paid for the counseling that you get to do alongside with it, but a lot of times I think by correcting one aspect of their skin or of their body or whatever it is that they're going to have this miraculous change. Um, what happens is they fix it and then they find something else. And so it's my job to help them to kind of see what, I didn't even realize I was doing it, but as I've become more in tune and I've been helped through spiritual awakening and everything like that, it's been one of those things where I'm like, you know, I can really guide these people into a path to find the true essence of themselves. And then also, it feels good to look good. Mm -hmm. And aging is nothing we have control over. And if we can do a little something to fine tune and tweak along the way, then we just feel better. Yeah. So. And what's wonderful about the treatments that you do is that it's, so it's, uh, non-invasive is the wrong Term. It is yeah, not, it's yeah, not, yeah, it's yeah, not invasive, yeah. so nothing has to get cut, no. nothing has to be you know, shoved in. It's, you're just stimulating what the body does naturally, yeah. which for me is always yeah. a, a healthier and a better way to do it. So we know that amazing things can happen through the mind, the improvements that can be made by programming the mind in the right way to think the right way. But actually, if you are sending signals, electrical impulses through that are going to stimulate and activate those areas and particularly the collagen so I was a hair and makeup artist for many years so you know I did my city and guild so you know, we did a big study of the skin and, and what goes on there so the science of it really intrigues me and fascinates me anyway yeah but that idea that you can and we've said this on other shows before I think with a lot of even with face creams and, and face treatments it's the actual stimulation it's the attention that you pay and yes. the massage that's happening with the skin but something that's really going to mm. stimulate it on a deeper level so yes. can you talk about some of the, like some the, of the treatments? specific treatments yeah, yeah. Um, they're amazing I would say my most popular treatments at the clinic that I'm at right now are our non-surgical facelift and um, I also do contouring with that with the face 
and then some of the body treatments that I do is the non-surgical fat reduction and then um, microneedling. So the non-surgical treatments are all um, energy-based. They are high-focus ultrasound, which is basic ultrasound. That is like getting an ultrasound with a baby in your belly goes straight down. What the technology has done is come to like more of a focal point at the right depth in the skin and basically little cauterizations of the tissue. So with other lasers, you resurface the skin, but you don't go deep to the muscular level. Um, I'm not hitting the muscle, I'm right above the muscle on this thing that they call the SMAS. It's a submuscular, it's like the white sheet that's attached to the muscle. Um, so I trained in, when I was in like um, my beginning stages of my lasers and everything in Mesa, Arizona, like is where the headquarters of the company that I work with. It's called Altherapy. Um, and I worked with them and I did the treatments like the protocol says and I followed it and people weren't getting good results. And so what has been really great for me is I, the more I have my head wrapped around it, I read white, like white paper studies, I try to find the true science. And I look at people's faces and I say, what do you want? Because if I did the same treatment on you, or you, or you, everyone wants something different. Yeah. So I try to truly custom treat <coughs> people, and having the knowledge behind that will give me that. I feel like I connect something, too, when I do the treatments. I'm like, let me give this person what they want. Um, and I think my clients, even back in America, miss that aspect of myself. I get messages all the time saying, you know, the person I go to now is okay, and they're good, and they do the job, but it's just not the same. It's, and so I kind of ruin them, I guess, because I do it how I want it done. And you're very intuitive with it, so it's yes. very holistic, yeah. it's yes. very bespoke for each person that comes to it you. It is, and yeah. I try like to do like a centering thing before I have each day where I kind of connect almost as a conduit of like just what can I do to give this person the optimal result. And I don't think people are really utilizing energy work into aesthetics, they do it in body work all the time. Um, but it's intention, and I think if you have good intention for any single person that you do something for, yeah. the result will be better. What do you say to people that are skeptical of this sort of thing? Like for people that would say, oh, like, if you're on a spiritual path, why do you care about what you look like? Like, what, what's, what's your response to people like that? It's funny, because I think, I don't know, I think that anyone who tries to say it, like when you put emphasis, if you're trying to copy somebody and look like somebody else, and follow a trend, then I think that there's an issue. But if you want to be the best version of yourself, why not physically? People push themselves in athletic ability all the time. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of a similar thing. Why not push yourself to be the best version and take care of yourself? Because when you take care of yourself and you do these things, I think other aspects of your life are happier. And that's just my like, personal thing that I experience. But the majority of the women that I treat come in and they sit and act like they're they feel kind of guilty at first, but once they start to connect to that, like, okay, this is who I feel like on the inside, and I look completely different than I did, like, <laughs> eight years ago, and nothing, like, dramatic and change or fake looking, but if you saw a picture of me eight years ago, um, and now, I've really evolved, and to find, I think it's the connection of my inner self to my exterior self, I feel like there's this match, where when I was younger, I never felt like I, I would look in the mirror and not even really know what I look like in a way. It was like I didn't know who that was. And I think it also was the lack of like love for myself. And as I've grown and really become more in tune with my feminine side of myself, I accept and love myself on a whole nother level. And I think that that shows, and when you have that inner confidence, I think when you see a confident woman, it doesn't matter if she's yeah. 30 pounds overweight, if you see her and she carries herself and she's happy and she loves herself, She's beautiful. I mean, everyone's beautiful, but when you see that, you appreciate it. It's a different kind of, I don't know, it's a different mindset, I, bet, I mm. guess, so. Mm. We've had quite a few conversations um, about, you know, beauty on the show. Like, we had one early on about, you know, if you're spiritual, do you have to let your hair go grey and walk around in rags and all of that stuff? And then we had another one recently about, you know, how many people putting on weight, especially women putting on weight, and a lot of us are kind of renegotiating almost our relationship with our bodies and with our looks, aren't we? Like it sort of is a topic that we've had on this show quite a lot. Everyone looks sorry. <laughs> oh, no, we're all, feeling, we're, all feeling, we're all feeling it. We're all feeling it. Staying quiet over there. <laughs> I'm a Sally. 